want to use this YouTube video to talk about religious freedom. I want to put it in context of the movie God's Not Dead 2, which is in theaters now. And if you haven't seen it, there may be some spoilers. That's just fair warning. You can choose to stop the video, go see the movie, and then come back to this if you like. And then the second thing is the legislation being proposed in the state of Georgia to protect religious freedoms. Before we begin, I think it's important for us to understand what it is we're talking about when we talk about religion. And I say this because so often people view religion as some kind of a personal belief that has no place in public discourse. You know, so often we're told that there's a separation of church and state in our society, and therefore religion should not be part of any kind of stately or political decisions. Such an idea is completely foolish to a religious person. And I say that because the word religion itself means to bind. It's the binding worldview that a religious person carries. It's the lens, so to speak, through which they see everything. So they can't separate that out from certain parts of their life and then bring it in at other times. It is the primary lens through which everything is seen for a religious person. And for most religious people, the religious comes to some relationship with the deity, with, with God. And certainly that's the case for Christians. The issue that we see in our society today is that this idea of religious freedom is under attack. It's been reduced to things such as freedom of worship, so you can pray and worship the Lord the way you like, but you, you can't carry that over into other areas of your life. And as a result, it's created damage for those who are truly religious. For a religious person, they get labeled a bigot or worse even when trying to uphold the tenets of their faith. And this, I think, is especially true for Christians. And it's what we see going on both in the movie God's Not Dead 2 as well as in the situation in Georgia. In the movie God's Not Dead 2, we have the portrayal of a teacher who's on trial because she had the audacity to mention Jesus in a historical context to a question that was raised by a student. But as the trial goes on, part of what also comes on trial is the fact that the whole worldview that this teacher operates out of is based on her Christian belief. And the question keeps being raised, well, is she operating out of her Christianity when she does this, that, or the other? Now, the answer for anybody who's truly religious is, yes, there's no other way to operate other than out of my religious belief system. The same situation is going on in Georgia. In Georgia, there's a bill proposed to protect religious freedom. And this bill is probably motivated by some recent decisions by the Supreme Courts and other political issues going on, specifically around same-sex marriage. And the question comes, becomes, what is the role of a Christian or what freedom does a Christian have to practice his or her faith in regards to these weddings, these marriages? Specifically, where I think it comes into play isn't so much as in, in the sense of, is a church going to be forced to perform a same-sex marriage? I think that's pretty well constitutionally protected. But I think the question that's raised is, what about the rights of an individual to practice his or her own faith? So, for example, the baker who opposes on moral grounds um, participating in a same-sex marriage and doesn't want to bake the cake. Or a photographer who doesn't want to do the photography for such a wedding. Do they have a right to practice their faith, to, to live as their conscience would have them live? Or are they going to be forced to participate in something that violates their own conscience and goes against the, the laws of their own religion, their, their own faith? Now, to be clear, the, the laws of most faiths don't say that a baker can't do something or a photographer can't do something. But it does say that we can't have any cooperation with evil. And so the question would be, is a baker who is baking a cake for a ceremony for a same-sex marriage cooperating or in some way condoning that marriage or saying it's acceptable uh, when they believe it's not? Those are the types of moral questions that the baker finds himself in. Same thing with a photographer, for example, or any number of other people who might be involved in performing a ceremony. Do they have a right to say, no, this goes against my religious beliefs?
It seemed to me that in a pluralistic society, we should be able to say, absolutely, you have a right to live by your conscience, certainly if it's telling you not to do something. Now, I know we could go to an extreme and say, well, suppose my conscience tells me to kill certain types of people or something like that. Would that be acceptable? And I think that's a whole other discussion. But this particular question is one about, do I have a right to refuse to do something that I view as a violation of my conscience? Certainly, for any religious person, I would think the answer should be yes. Um, I have a right to live by my conscience and to refuse to do that which I believe to be immoral. Um, certainly, for Christians, we would say that our primary obligation is to God and not to the world. Certainly, Scripture is very clear depicting that there's the way of the world and the way of God, and we are to choose the way of God, the way of life, uh, over the way of the world, which leads to death and destruction. And even when the secular forces oppose us, we are still supposed to remain faithful and loyal to, to God. And I think that's what's at issue here, as Christians are saying in this country, we want to have that right protected. Other people are saying, you don't have a right to have that right protected because you're going to just basically, it's a form of legalized discrimination and you're impinging on other people's rights to have you do things for them. I don't know about that. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a, it's a, I think that's a weak argument there. I think the stronger argument is that we are bound by God to do what God has told us to do. And this is even true even if the secular society says that we're not bound uh, by God and we have to do something. So in other words, if the society should pass a law that says that you're obliged to do something and that something violates your own conscience, as a Christian, your primary obligation is to God and to your conscience, not to the world. And therefore, you would suffer the consequences, perhaps, of the worldly persecution, but you'd be right with your creator. I think, again, the movie God's Not Dead, too, brings that out uh, very well. Uh, the teacher makes a comment. She said, I would rather be uh, judged by men and right with the Lord than right with men and judged by the Lord. I think that's the point of view for every Christian. And I think we need to begin to start to take that seriously as our beliefs become more and more under attack. They are certainly countercultural at this point, and they're becoming under attack. And it's up to us now to ask that question, who are we going to follow? And I think the proper response, of course, comes from Scripture. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord.